Hey there guys, welcome back to DevDreamer, and this is lesson number 27 now, and we're looking at the CSS display property. Now the CSS display property is very important when it comes to CSS, because it determines how an element is displayed, or even if it's displayed. So there are two main display values for most elements. They can either be block or inline. Now block level element is one that spans the full width of the screen, no matter how much you uh, increase or, or decrease the uh, screen size. But an inline element only takes up the amount of space that is required. So let's take a look at some examples. Now, block level elements are elements such as um, such as H1 here. This, this would be a block level element. Um, paragraph element is also a block level element. So um, let's say I am a paragraph. Um, of course, H2s, H3s, they're all block level elements. We'll just go up to H4 for now. And just copy this and change this for H2, H3, and H4. So these are all known as block level elements. And the reason why they're block level elements, as I said, is because they're actually spanning the full width of the page. So if you go to a style.css file and we actually select these paragraph H2, H3, and H4, and let's just put a border around these and you'll see that this will actually span the whole width of the page okay like so and if we actually increase the size of this page you see that it still spans the entire width of our page so that's what a block level element does it has two basic features number one it spans the full width of the page and number two it starts on a new line of course it's going to have to start on a new line because it's spanning the whole width of a page an inline level element does not start on a new line and it only takes up as much space as it actually needs so for example, some examples of inline elements are the span tag, changes for I am a span. Um, what else? The anchor tag for links. So we could say I am an anchor tag. And another example of an inline element is the image tag as well. So here, let's just say um, images and let's just go for this image of Paris here. And that's obviously huge. So let's just give it a bit of 200 pixels. Put the alt in as well. So as you can see, then these three do not start on a new line and they only take up whatever space or width that they require. So again, let's go to a style.css file and let's also give these a border as well. So it was a span. It was an A tag and it was an image. So here we're just going to say border, one pixel, solid, blue. So these, as you can see, even if we increase the size of the screen here, they remain exactly the same. So they're the two main types of display in CSS. Now, what if you had a situation where you had a paragraph element, but within that paragraph element, you wanted to style perhaps just a word or a phrase differently to how the rest of the paragraph is styled? Well, what we can do is we can do, do a paragraph and let's just say, I am watching Dev Dreamer. Okay. Let's say that we wanted to style Dev Dreamer. Let's also give this an ID. of let's just say sentence. Okay. Nothing fancy. And in our style.css file then, we can select that by doing hashtag sentence. And now let's give this some styling. Let's give it a background color of dodge blue. Let's give the text color as white. Okay. And that's it for now. So how then do we style the text of Dev Dreamer to be different to these styles? Well, what we can do is we can actually wrap Dev Dreamer in a span tag. So let's do a span inside our paragraph tag and place the text inside the span. As you can see, this now has a border of blue because our CSS file has rightly recognized it as a span tag. But now that we've done that, we can actually say sentence and inside sentence, we're looking for span tag. Now we can just say border none. Okay, so it removes that border there. Let's just zoom in. Okay, and we can say, let's change the color of this to uh, black. 
Let's change the background color as well to yellow. And change the font size to 50 pixels. So as you can see, our text of DevDreamer now has different styling in comparison to the paragraph tag. Now, of course, you're not going to be winning any awards for styling anything like this here, but this is just to show you how you can apply different styling within block level elements. Now, let's just comment this out because I want to show you a different type of display. And this is going to be displayed on our inline elements. So remember, the inline element by default only takes up the amount of width that it requires. So here with the span tag, here with the anchor tag, and here with the image. So by default, these have a display of inline. Now, because they have a display of inline, you won't actually be able to increase or specify the width of these elements. So if I was to say width 200 pixels, as you can see, that hasn't done anything. Because once again, elements that have a display of inline will only take up the amount of width that they require. But what if you had a scenario where you had an inline element and you wanted to specify a width? Well, CSS gives us the inline block property. And now, as you can see, each of our inline elements have grown to 200 pixels each. So we can say 100 pixels, 400 pixels, in which case they're wrapping onto a new line. That's just because this screen is too small. If we extend this, you'll see that once again, they all appear on the same line. So using the display inline block, we can actually specify the width of inline level elements. Now, the last thing I want to share with you is how to actually remove an element or to hide an element and what the difference is between the two. And once again, let's pick on our inline elements here. So let's just change this back to inline and we have them set back to what they normally were. What we want to do is we want to remove these elements. So here we can just say display none. And what that's done, it's very important to notice, is this has removed the elements from the page and also removed the space that they were taking up. Now they haven't been deleted completely because we can just bring them back by saying display inline. There they are. So it's very important to know that you're not actually deleting these elements. You're just removing them from the view. They are still there and they can be displayed again by simply giving them a relevant display property. And the other property that we can use to sort of hide and display elements on a page is the visibility property. So we can say visibility and we can specify hidden. Now what this will do is it will remove our elements. So once again, it still removes them so we can't see them in the actual view, but it's going to keep the spacing that they actually occupied. So if we click on hidden, we can see now our inline elements have been removed, but the space that they actually hold still remains. So as you can see, CSS then is quite flexible in the different options it provides us with when it comes to hiding and showing elements on the page. So guys, that's everything you need to know about the CSS display property. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at the CSS shadow property, and I'm going to be showing some really cool stuff you can do with text shadows as well as box shadows. So that's it for this lesson, guys. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.